So when we get into more definitive care, we have many treatment options. And the world of phlebology is exploding a little bit in terms of the options that we have. I feel like every conference I go to, I'm hearing about new things, new research, new cutting edge treatments. But generally speaking, I can say with confidence, the endovenous approaches have um, become our gold standard, meaning no more strippings. And I won't say completely no more, but I can say I have not done any type of phlebectomy in the past 11 years, which is pretty great. Um, when it comes to endovascular approaches, we have many options. Uh, the most common are endothermal approaches, which are the radio frequency and the endovenous laser options which are very, very simple procedures with patients walking in, walking out, being in the office for about an hour. Uh, during that hour, after we get them all comfortable on the table, we do a full uh, sterile um, prep. Then we use a small needle, usually a 32 gauge needle with buffered lidocaine and we, we numb their skin. And then we place a, a small micro access the nice thing is the only discomfort that's really associated with this procedure is that numbing of their skin, because once we have our micro access kit placed, there's no sensation on the inside of the veins. So for both of those endothermal approaches, once we have access, we simply slide a very small fiber optic through the vein, right to that critical spot where healthy flow becomes unhealthy flow. It's very easy to see with ultrasound because the veins are jet black and our fiber optic is bright white. Once everything is all positioned, we simply tilt the patient so their feet are higher than their heart with our tilt tables. We add to mesin anesthesia or very dilute uh, anesthesia around the outside of the vein, which does three things. First, it compresses the vein walls hard against our fiber optics. Second, it actually creates a heat sink in the event there were any extra heat uh, and all the structures close by the vein are floated away and insulated by this extra fluid. And then the third thing it does is it provides a nice anesthetic effect for the patients. So they don't really feel anything at all with our fourth and final step. When we turn the heat source on and slowly pull it back towards our IV access. In doing so, the vein literally seals itself shut uh, stopping the backflow of the uh, deep to superficial reflux. Um, patients, like I said, walk in, walk out. They're in the office for about an hour. Uh, Postoperatively, the most important things are just that they walk 30 minutes every day and wear compression for two weeks. So overall, pretty uneventful. The other techniques which are similar in effectiveness, a um, little newer to the scene, uh, the first is cyanoacrylate or superglue. Um, this one has uh, been FDA approved for about five years, but we're still getting new data. Uh, it's extremely effective. The big bonus with it is that you don't need to wear compression stockings postoperatively. Uh, the downsides are that it tends to take a little bit longer while performing it. And um, there have been some allergic reactions to the glue. So I think that might be one of the deterrents um, or why it might not have quite taken over the um, popularity that the endothermal techniques have taken over. Um, mechanical chemical ablation, uh, where we actually use a device to scratch the vein wall on the inside, and then shower it with sclerosing agents. And then lastly, true chemical ablation where we use um, proprietary foam to seal veins shut. All of these options have changed the landscape of how vein treatments are performed. They've given us great options for different size, different morphologies, different pressures in vein treatment. And each of them brings something new to the field in terms of how to best care for patients. We always have the same end goal, which is stopping the backflow right at that critical level where health becomes disease.